Hold up, how is Chris Paul not in the MVP conversation? Wherever he goes, they win. Definition of valuable. This is not an MVP video though. It is calling out the best moves since the offseason. Yes, CP3 is on this list. James Harden though is not. I'm not saying it was a bad move, but we'll see. That deal will be judged on winning a chip. This list is about free agents and trades we can judge. It is the top 10 best free agent signings and trades since the offseason. Hey, it's Casey. Welcome to AM Hoops. Hit subscribe and notification bells for five videos per week, dropping at 5 Eastern. It's always free, but if you want a little more like John Percy and Anthony Bonetta, thank you guys, become an AM Hoops member. You get a shout out. Uh, we can talk about video ideas that you have. We'll definitely DM. Early access to videos. Be on the Discord server. The live stream on Sundays. There's a whole thing. Uh, but if not, you can always hit me up on Twitter at Casey Kiernan. Before we start the list, a bonus trade is Karis Levert. This was pointed out actually by a commenter, Finn Alman, and he's got a great point. The Pacers traded for Karis on the James Harden four-team deal and found a growth on his kidney. He needed emergency surgery. Karis even said, quote, I didn't have any symptoms. I was feeling 100% healthy. So in a way, this trade could have possibly saved me in the long run. Look, a life-saving trade is more important than all these other deals put together. But let's go to number 10, Frank Kaminsky. Didn't expect that, did ya? The Kings waved Frank the Tank after he looked awful in preseason, so the Suns picked him up for nothing. He's only making a non-guaranteed 1.9 million bucks. He is now starting and contributing. This is one of the smartest moves so far because of how he's played. Lineups with Frank have a plus 10 net rating. Kaminsky's career being on the brink to becoming a starter is a cool story and a smart move. Number nine, speaking of smart moves, Robert Covington and Derek Jones Jr. Look, I know we're bending the rules a little bit, but these guys have got to be a package deal. The Blazers have been beating teams with elite offense, but defense is part of the equation. Rocco and DJ make an impact. Both guys are in the best Blazers lineup in terms of net rating. Bringing in two solid starters is a huge plus. Last year, Portland couldn't guard anyone. This season, they're inconsistent, but there are signs. Players on new teams get a pass defensively with no training camp or practice, but the Blazers are top half in the West. They'll be a much better two-way playoff team. Number eight, Jarrett Allen. This trade just happened and Allen is still building chemistry, but the Cavaliers got a steal. All they had to trade was Dante Exum, one first and a second. Cleveland got a rim running and shot blocking center just 22 years old. They had Andre Drummond, that's kind of been a mess, but Allen is on their timeline. I think that they need more three point shooting to maximize what the fro brings, but he's already a great pick and roll partner with Colin Sexton and Darius Garland. He is a lob threat, rim protector, and an excellent get. At number seven was Dennis Schroeder to the Lakers. The Lake Show are all about LeBron James and Anthony Davis, of course. Schroeder, Montres Harrell, and Marc Gasol have been nice role players, but none will dramatically change their ceiling. Still, Schroeder has started every game he's been available and been good. He averages 14 points and four assists a night. In February, he's been super efficient at 37% from deep, 52% from the field. If that's a sign that he's getting more acclimated to his new team, Shooter will be higher on this list come playoff time. The number six smart move, Christian Wood. Wood isn't higher on this list for two reasons. Number one, we still don't know what his impact will be long term. Does averaging a double-double matter if your team sucks? Can we really tell how good you are? The number two reason is defense. He was awful to start the year, but has improved slightly before his injury. I would love to see what Wood can do as part of a talented young core. Maybe moving on from Boogie does that. For now though, he was definitely worth the money and that protected first round pick. Number five is Nick Batum. Dude is a completely different player than last year. He was waived in November by the Hornets after a career worst season. 
Now, Batum scores nine points on 45% from three. He averages a career high one and a half steals and is a good passer slash playmaker. The Clips totally lucked out getting Batum and Ibaka to fill holes on their roster, but Batum on a veteran's minimum is the second best move this offseason. The number four smartest move, Serge Ibaka. Ibaka is not on the Clips for his offense. They need him to be an upgrade over Montrez Harrell for interior defense. So far, it's kind of a mediocre return, to be honest. Just over a block per game, five defensive boards in 24 minutes. The Clips are middle of the road in opponent points in the paint and second chance points. He's still in the top five moves, though, because of a team-friendly contract, playoff potential, and leadership. Serge's presence gets Kawhi out of his shell, which is huge. Number three, another package deal, Seth Curry and Danny Green. The Sixers' biggest flaw was a lack of shooting. Elton Brand was the only person who couldn't see that. So Daryl Morey comes in, makes his mark immediately, gets Danny dumping Al Horford's contract, and swaps Josh Richardson for Seth Curry. Both guys have been up and down, but the big impact is on Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, and Tobias Harris. That trio has been amazing. Simmons near the top for assists to three-pointers. Embiid is maximized with floor spacers and Horford not clogging the paint. We thought this move was brilliant, and the Sixers are backing it up. The number two move, Jordan Clarkson. This is actually a re-sign, but not everyone was on board at the time. Clarkson was looked at by some as an ISO-heavy, inefficient gunner who kills ball movement. Instead, he is the runaway sixth man of the year. Clarkson averages a career-high 18 points off the bench. He's hitting 38% from downtown, and a big reason why Utah has been best in the West. Honestly, this was a risk. There was no telling if Clarkson's bubble performance was real. He was cold-blooded against the Nuggets. Utah took a $51 million chance, and they were right. But number one is Chris Paul. Yes, or should be MVP. The Suns are gunning for a top four seed, just like Paul's Thunder team almost got last year. His super efficient 17 points a night are one thing, but his effect on this roster is huge. DeAndre Ayton is having his most efficient season yet. Devin Booker has amazing numbers, but the biggest thing is confidence late in games. Booker said, quote, Chris knows what's going on on the floor before it even happens. With him, the game is never out of reach. We saw that the other day against the Pelicans. I love the Jay Crowder move as well, but snagging Chris Paul for basically Kelly Oubre, Ricky Rubio, and a first has made all the difference. Okay, we can't fully judge these until the playoffs, but we do know some teams really improved with smart deals. So guys, this is the worst trades and free agents from the offseason with a couple of draft picks thrown in here. Um, and this up top is the Suns playlist in honor of CP3 getting number one.